Okay, this is going to be one of the last times you ever look out of the horrible viewfinder of this horrible cell phone camera, because I got myself a Christmas, new Christmas present. It is Panasonic SDR S7 camcorder. And there's a quick look at the box. And before I show you the camera in the box, you have an instruction manual, warranty information, software for the camera, includes editing software, I'll talk about that a little later, TV out cables, stereo sound, mini USB to USB cable for connecting the camera to your computer, power cable, and power adapter. Oh yes, and hand strap, which you're going to want to use because of the size of the camera. You know, the subject of the size, here's the camera. And as you can see, it's very, very small. As a comparison, there's a dollar bill. Here's a baseball. And here's a Nintendo DS Lite. So, as you can see, it is really small. And the one disadvantage of that is it's very hard to keep it steady. I would recommend a tripod. And we have on the exterior, you have a lens cap, controlled by a little switch on the side here. You have a stereo microphone. Micro microphone picks up sound very well. We have a record button here, a record button here. We have zoom buttons. Those also act as volume buttons. 2.7 inch LCD screen. You have directional buttons and an enter button. Buttons that says auto and manual. You know, menu button. And then there's a selector switch that switches from video video recording, video playback, still recording, still playback. And we have holes for a tripod. And down on this door on the bottom, you have your battery, which is a very small battery. And a spot for the SD card, which you have to buy separately. It supports up to a 16 gigabyte SDHC card. You can also use a regular SD card. Battery life is very short because the battery is so small. It only lasts about an hour. It's my only major gripe with this camera. On the back here, you also have your door that opens to your three connections. Mini USB, the proprietary connection for the TV out cables and the power adapter. Um, turn it on real quickly. Starts up fairly quickly. Just flick this little thing on. Red light goes on. It's not the quickest start up, but it does start up. Picture is very clear. You have three recording modes: high quality, standard quality, and low quality. All all the settings they all look pretty good. It also has electronic image stabilization. It has a wind noise cut. It's got ten times optical zoom. It also has seven hundred times digital zoom, but digital zoom is garbage. You have different options in your menu. It works pretty good on auto, auto mode. I haven't found a reason to use manual mode yet, but you do have quite a bit of control for such a small camera. But the real question about this camera is how well does it actually record? Well, first, here's footage I took outside in good light. So here's a quick outdoor shot. And as you can see, it works very, very well 
when there's a lot of light it's the best showing of it and you'll notice that the camera does record in widescreen but I'm in 4x3 right now because I'm using Movie Maker and you can only do one or the other but you do have the option to switch in between standard and widescreen so that's pretty good as well now here's some footage I took in a dark basement here we are in the dark basement very little light source in here see it still can pick up objects with very little light there's almost no light over there so obviously you're not going to see much it doesn't do too bad with the lighting contrast so for the most part it performs very well in the dark uh... there is a night mode that supposedly makes it much better in the dark but it's all it does is slow the shutter speed way, way down, so it's, so it's so choppy that it's not even worth using on video. And finally, in a semi-ashens type ripoff, here's footage I recorded in my bedroom, with which has very poor lighting, and is purposely lit to have really bad lighting contrast as well show you how well it performs in that and it's also a quick test to show you how the microphone picks up sound. I purposely set up the lighting so it's as bad as it could possibly be. We have a light source over to the side of me here. We have no light source over here. There's a lot of lighting contrast and as you can see the camera deals with it pretty well. And as you can also hear the microphone is picking up my voice very well. The microphone works very good. Now a quick thing about the software, it's garbage. It's got some editing software on it. It's more limited than Windows Movie Maker. Um, also the camera, it says it records an MPEG-2. It records in some kind of MPEG-2 hybrid that uses a .mpg and .mtv files together to play the video. This software does have the capability to transcode that into a normal MPEG-2 file, though. Only issue is you can't do it in one big batch. You have to do each one separately, which is kind of annoying. It's not too big of an issue if you want to just edit some of the stuff you took together and then put it on a DVD. But if you want to do anything else, it can be a little bit annoying. But it's not a major problem. And that pretty much wraps up my review couple more things to say before I'm done. I, as I said before, I'm recording this in 4x3 because my cell phone is only in 4x3 and I'm using Movie Maker to edit. So Movie Maker can only do one or the other widescreen or standard, so I had to record in standard. But it is native to widescreen. Um, you can see videos in widescreen. I have a bunch of test videos I uploaded to my channel. Uh, keep in mind with all these videos, because of the YouTube upload, as well as the fact that I had to transcode the MPEG-2 to an AVI file, that the quality is a little bit lower than the camera is actually capable of. Um, other than that, just the last couple of things I'm going to mention. The controls aren't the most ergonomic in the wa world, but they're not te terrible. Um, the speaker for playing back video isn't very good, and there's no headphone jack. But, other than that, it's really worth the price. Um, $220 to $300, depending on where you shop around. And if you're in the UK, $140 to $260 pounds, about. But, it's definitely worth it, both for the size and the price. I would dec definitely recommend this camera if you're looking for something inexpensive that's flash memory based. But the thing that makes me the happiest, no more piece of crap LG VX8300 camera phone. Done with the recording with that thing.